Can everyone hear me? Hi, my name is Mike Block. I work for Natural Resource Management Programs, Department of Environmental Affairs. I was there a couple of months ago with KZN DA. I just want to talk about some planning we've done for KZN, but I'm talking about numerous people and numerous organisations. So I'm going to use the relative we, and I'm talking about NRM as a whole. I'm not trying to talk about dedicated funding sources. There are numerous dedicated funding sources that we're talking as collaboratively. Parthenium, I think it's been discussed. This is the plant on the left. You know, if you travel around the Kanyakuda, Zululand area, it's <coughs> very abundant within highly disturbed areas. Uh, it's native to South and Central America, first recorded in South Africa in the late 1800s. I've just put a small intro here because it's already been covered. Big imp impacts are human health, biodiversity, and agriculture. This is a photograph we took on a field trip uh, early January into a community area in the Mkanyakuda district municipality with high levels of, of parthenium, cattle grazing in between it on Lantana, which was, I don't know if it was actually grazing on Lantana, it was sticking his nose in there for something else probably, but it was quite an interesting situation where grazing capacity has been reduced so, so much that cattle were moving more, and up, more from areas to other areas and the community was complaining about that. So they were looking for grazing. What is the problem of parthenium in KZN? The green in on this map shows you where parthenium has invaded as of last year, November. We have taken lots of databases, lots of data sets, and we try to bring it all together so we can get a distribution of parthenium for the province. So it goes all the way down from the southern edge of KZN all the way up to, up to Cozy Bay. Galau border post and basically just north of Pongola, just past the hospital if you know where that is. But it's, it is severely impacted KZN. So what do we do? This is a situation, we've now listened to what Brian said earlier about we've got a national plan on how we're going to manage invasive species. How do we actually translate that down to this step where we actually make something happen in the provinces? We were very fortunate in KZN that our Provincial cabinet prioritized this and said you will develop a plan and of course they said you've got three months to develop the plan as usual The interesting thing what was said though money was not a factor That is a big mindset change within government saying money was not the factor let us get There's no person day cost to this and that is terminology used by most NRM projects This was manage a species come up with a plan on manage a species Phenomenal. To get people in government to think like that, especially senior management, was mind-boggling. So what did we do? So there's a national strategy that was developed that's currently being updated in 2007. Parthenium is confined to core infested areas in KZN as the provincial. Social, economic, agriculture, environmental impacts are reduced to a minimum. These all speak to national ideas. So basically... Okay, leave that. Basically, what Brian was saying earlier was, how do we, how do we plan in terms of prevention? So we've got uh, pre-border invasions, post-border invasions. So pre-border is preventing it. Parthenium is here. It's going to be here for the rest of our lives, and we're going to reduce the impact of it slightly if we put in enough investment. We want to, certain areas eradicate, certain areas we want to contain, and in other areas where we need to do asset protection. And this is the standard graph, this is what Brian was speaking about earlier. So we used that, that concept and we developed a strategy according to district municipalities. So it's very important for us as government to use government, government mechanisms. And, and district municipalities are the mechanisms to implement on the ground. There have been numerous uh, people employed within district municipalities, we've got some of the representatives here, that have the mechanisms to actually implement and we need to be careful that we don't bypass these regional structures, these district municipal structures to implement these projects. So based on that we developed a strategy or the plan on the district municipalities that were infested. We looked at levels of infestation and this was based on road surveys that were done. We then looked at the priority level of inter intervention based on the objective prior to this. So if, it, if we're looking at asset protection which was at the bottom in the areas over there, protect priority areas. Not necessarily conservation areas, priority areas. The lower density areas we want to try and eradicate, so we search and neutralize, and that goes up to the 10% where we drew a line in the sand. 
You can argue this silly blue in the face. It could be 9%, 8%, 12%. We drew the line in the sand. We said 10% is our cutoff. That's how we're going to do it. So the response is using existing geographical responses. So that's working for water clearing, land care clearing, invasive alien species programs, mobile units, and clearing units to actually manage a species. And it's all dependent on the, on the priority rating per district municipality. The mechanism that we would use was chemical control of all pathways. Again, what Brian was speaking about earlier is pathway management and geographic management. The chemical control of priority areas in low priority district municipalities, those in Kanyakuda, Zululand, are low priority because the areas have already reached 90% infestation. We will protect the hospitals, clinics, schools, bus stops where we have high influx of people and we'll put resources to that. This is just a photograph of a bus stop where on the on the Kazi Bay Road in the Mkanyakuri district where people are coming out of the community, gathering at a central point and being exposed to parthenium in terms of the human health aspect. So we need to actually manage those areas. So that is part of the plan. This is a new clinic that's been built up in Mkanyakuri as well. There's parthenium, parthenium, parthenium all around it where, the, where food's being served, there's parthenium there. So there's People are being exposed to the plant and we need to actually mitigate that. So what are we going to do secondly to protect the uh, protected area priority area funding? So we're going to look at protected areas, we're going to invest money into protected areas as well. We're then going to support the farmers. Come up with any plan you want. If you don't get the landowners on your side, you can throw the plans away. We have a current investment of 150,000 hectares in the Mkanyakuda Zululand area that is under herbicide assistance, has been since 2007, and we are getting the most detailed, brilliant plans from these places. Pindagain Reserve, three minutes. Okay. Uh, Pindagain Reserve has developed a plan that is phenomenal. Every wash bay is going to be monitored because they, their game drive vehicles go out, they have transfer vehicles running from Durban up to Pindagain Reserve, they have aeroplanes flying in from Botswana and they have developed a specific plan on how they're going to manage all those aspects of that pathway and the distribution. And it's phenomenal to get a landowner to think like that and it's really great work. Herbicide assistance for surrounding buffers and road networks, we've got to manage that. This is just a classic uh, photograph of Pothenium on fence, fence lines up in Kanyakude, uh, on railway lines that are transecting properties. So this is the response. We will put in place units depending on the priority. So these will be search and destroy teams trying to protect the Eastern Cape border. So we try and not allow plants to go into Eastern Cape. Protect the Durban area so that we don't allow plants to move up into the Peter Maritzburg area which by the sound of it's already moved into there. This is under Sandby EDRR control. They've got teams that are in that area over there. Then. The other response is around protecting assets. So it's all based on the national strategy. Not that we had the national strategy then, but the concepts are all very similar because it's based on Australian methodologies. This is just finer detail showing how asset protection of, for example, Pindagain Reserve, where they've invested close to 15 million since 2003 into managing invasive alien species and we will continue the support of that through NRM and that's through KZNDA, EA or NRM. This is just budgets. These are just figures that are invested from KZNDA, EA and this is even topped up more than that through natural resource management programs, investment into geographic areas, land use incentive funding. There's a breakdown per thing. There's a document that's been distributed. It's on our website. So we will, you know, there's serious commitment from government. This is just a breakdown of how the funding is being spent. This is looking at pathways of distribution. I'm going to get approximately 35% of the budget. Uh, buffer areas, human health and impacts, agricultural impacts, conservation. And this was to look to see, compare what Australians were doing to see how closely we were aligning to that. Management, app, uh, this is an app we want to develop this year. It's going to be really cool. A sector of the market we always complain about is we don't have enough specialists on the ground. Rubbish. Take that idea, throw it out the window. We have vegetation specialists on the ground everywhere doing EIAs for us. We don't utilize the data. The EIA comes through, identifies the species, and gets put in a pile somewhere. We need to actually start tapping into that resource. We can utilize that data, but we're not doing it in our process at the moment. 
totally underutilized resource and the application is to actually try and get information from EIA practitioners through into a centralized database where we can then capture the data and then send back saying, okay, you're doing an EIA for this person, therefore you will follow the following management plans. At the moment, it is a one-line item saying you will, have an, you will have an alien plant plan. There's no species plans, etc. And we've been working very closely with the provincial department to actually look at putting these plans in place so that the data flows both ways. So that people actually assimilate data, we can use that data and then feed data back. And you won't believe how many EIAs we've reviewed through the province this year that is a, they are doing it on, on, on an annual basis that's being done and that data is not being utilized. Nearly done. This is just looking at the response. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>